Hello and welcome to the This Works For Me Virtual Summit. I'm your host, Firm Pate Watson. I am the Director of the Faculty Development Center at Murray State University. Are you looking for strategies to help you curb late attendance while increasing your student engagement? Our guest today, Dr. Deborah Ferdinand James, will be providing you with some strategies to do so. Dr. Ferdinand James, welcome. Thank you, it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for being here. So, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're from, and what you do? So, I am Deborah Friedman James, and I am an educational technologist here at the School of Education at the St. Augustine campus of the University of the West Indies. I teach graduate and undergraduate students, technology-related courses, and my research interests include blended learning and academic supporting strategies for students. Thank you for letting our viewers know a little bit about you. So we're going to get right into your strategy, and the title of your strategy is Using Graded Review Quizzes to Improve Student Punctuality and Engagement. Could you help us understand what impressed you to start using these strategies? Sure. In our last accreditation report, the University of the West Indies, the St. Augustine campus, mm -hmm. it won its bid for another seven year term of accreditation for the period 2018 2025. Mm -hmm. And one of the recommendations coming out of that accreditation report was that uh, classroom observations should be done on a regular basis rather than when there's a complaint from a student. So in 2018, I had a peer review done by an expert teacher of one of my undergraduate courses, Instructional Design. And coming out of the peer review report, and I could uh, read for you just a quote. The peer reviewer noticed that I had a conspicuous number of students coming in late, as many as 17 at times. So I knew that um, she was not telling me anything new because I knew that that had been um, a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. I had been um, facilitating the course. Now, I did try uh, different strategies and I would start the course on time so that students know I'm not waiting on them. And, and that didn't work much. Mm -hmm. And uh, in discussing the challenge with my director, she indicated that I should probably have the student write the time in, in the attendance register um, when they arrive so that they, you know, they are aware that I am aware this is the time that they arrived in that class. Mm. But I still didn't need to <laughs> the late company, obviously, because the peer reviewer noted I, I had as many as 17 students at time late. So I knew I had to uh, try and address that problem because it, it was becoming um, greater and greater. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, in our last annual report for the campus, which is the 2017 2018 annual report, Factors were highlighted that affected underperformance in students. And one of the factors, which we now know, is uh, non attendance and late attendance. Uh, two other factors would have been low student engagement and difficulty in getting students to read the course material. Mm -hmm. so this was high on my agenda because it, it kept coming up in um, you know, the reports on the performance or operations of the campus. Mm -hmm. So I did some research, I went on to ResearchGate, I started reading on the topic, and then I eventually um, posted a question on the topic. Mm -hmm. And I got um, that response from one uh, lecturer mm -hmm. who used it and it worked. And so I was able to feel convinced, you know, that if this works, let me see if I can try it, because I became desperate at that, at that point. Mm -hmm. And I implemented it last year. Sorry, not last year, but this year. Oh. 
this year, this year is summer. Um, for you, it would be summer. For us, it would be semester three, which is the uh, July, August period. Well, June, July, not, not August, June, July. And it worked well. Uh, the students understood when I explained it would be done as a review, although it would be graded, but it's part of the best practice for instructional design where you stimulate recall before you move on to the new material for that session or the lesson. And so they understood that it was actually um, practicing what we preach, in other words. Mm -hmm. And um, it worked quite well. They were very much um, engaged in terms of volunteering their responses afterwards. I mean, I had a few students jumped out of their seats when they realized and when correcting the, the quiz afterwards that they had the correct answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it, it was, it was um, very engaging for them and, and they seemed very enthusiastic and excited about, about it. Excellent. And what I like about what you said is that you told the students the reason why you were using that strategy. And because that's important to let them have a rationale for why you're introducing something like that at the beginning of the course. So that was good. So did this strategy influence any other aspect of your teaching? Definitely. Uh, coming out of the peer review report, the peer reviewer recognized that I did not know the students by, I did not know very many of the students by name. So one of the recommendations was that I should try to know students by their name. And um, she also recognized that I needed to encourage more students to participate. So her comment was that not much effort was made to curb the dominant voices in the class. Mm -hmm. And even though I would call on the early birds, as it were, to answer questions that the latecomers were asking, mm -hmm. she still uh, noted that I probably needed a little more teacher repetition mm -hmm. to affirm those latecomers in, um, in what was said by the early birds so that they would be convinced that, you know, the, question, the answers that they were given um, were correct. So, yes, indeed, when I implemented the quiz, uh, I have a mixed group. It's a big group because we have um, students from different programs. Mm -hmm. As instructional design, it's a required course in several programs. So I had early childhood ed students. I had youth guidance, uh, primary general students. I also had the master's in uh, inclusive education and special education, inclusive and special education, mm -hmm. and the masters in leadership in uh, technical and vocational education and training. Mm -hmm. So I had a big group. So what I did, I rotated the questions mm -hmm. for the different groups, mm -hmm. and I asked that a different student mm -hmm. would uh, volunteer and answer every time we rotate the, the questions for the quiz. Oh. I will ask the students, please say your name. So I was able to learn the students' name, names. Oh, <laughs> good. And they responded with their um, answers. I would then repeat and um, affirm what they said. So I got in the repetition that the peer reviewer um, asked about and suggested that I do. And um, it, it was definitely helpful, yes. Wow. Excellent. Students always like when you know their names. <laughs> yes, it personalizes um, the class. And yeah, yeah. And feel um, visible and cared for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So overall, what would you, how would you say students responded to this strategy? I think it was quite positive. I liked the, um, the enthusiasm and the engagement I saw when students got their questions right and they knew that um, it was the correct response. I mean, they cheered each other and applaud each other. And so um, I think they responded positively to the, uh, to the quiz. Mm -hmm. I did have one student who was uh, quite impressed. <laughs> and he sent me a note at the end of the course. I'll just read a snippet from it. Yeah. He says, 
I was greatly impressed with the way you rolled out the weeks and, and the support you provided. It was felt and admired. The strategy of the quiz at the beginning of class was a new experience for me and exciting as it was informative. So that's a testimony from the students. Wow, that, that's wow. very good feedback because it was a new strategy for him and he really seemed as if he got a lot out of it. That's, that's excellent. Yes. So it seemed as if the students really liked it in general. So it, it sounds almost like a fairy tale. You tried a new strategy, it worked, and wow. I assume that there are no challenges then, right? There were no challenges? Well, I would not call them challenges, but it's not that um, students would all, you know, just agree to do the quizzes. Mm -hmm. The quizzes were graded mm -hmm. and they were short. Mm -hmm. So they knew that um, in doing them, they would get a mark towards their final grade. But you do have the regular latecomers and sometimes they are genuinely late because they come from long distances. Oh. So what I did, I um, gave the option if they needed for the department to do a letter to their employer for an early release um, so that they can arrive to do the, you know, on time to do the quiz, they could do so. And one student did request one such letter and it was issued and she was able to arrive on time to do her quiz, yes. Another, uh, challenge you may have is ensuring that the options for your multiple choice questions are mutually exclusive. So in uh, one or two other quizzes, I, I did have students argue about the correct answer for you know, a question. And um, I had to give the point because when I was tallying the marks, I realized that uh, more students got the question wrong than right. Mm -hmm. So I had to give the mark um, so that um, you, you do have to take care and maybe have a peer review your quiz to ensure that the, their responses are mutually exclusive or else you can have a big argument in the class mm -hmm. as to which is the right answer, yeah. Wow, excellent. And I really like how you were willing to give the students the point because of the, yeah. the difference in, in opinion right there. So what would you say to our viewers who resonate with what you shared today, but they are still perhaps a little bit hesitant to try this strategy. Perhaps they have even tried a strategy before and it didn't work out as well. What would you say to uh, a viewer who is thinking that way? I would say that I, you would need to uh, put aside some time because it would take some pre-planning uh, for, for the quest to go well. Mm -hmm. In your pre-planning, you have to ensure that you have that area of your course delivery uh, well highlighted in your, in your lesson plan. Mm -hmm. And in your delivery, you want to ensure that you emphasize those areas in the course delivery that uh, relate to the questions on the quiz. Now, I'm not saying to teach to the test, but you yeah. want to be able uh, to give students the benefit of the reinforcement so that they can answer the quizzes, uh, the, uh, the questions quickly, because the quizzes are very short. It's just 10 multiple choice questions to do in 10 minutes. So they have to be short, but still cover the material in a way that they could still answer it and apply what they know to um, situations. So it's not just content recall. You have application questions in there, but in order to do that, you in your delivery, you have to emphasize, you know, what the example is and how the concept is applied and so on. So I would encourage you, um, I, I have gotten very positive feedback and I could honestly say it's worthwhile the planning and the time, um, this one student said, I found you to be always well prepared and the course extremely well organized in a way that also allowed for private exploration. It was a pleasure experiencing you teach exclamation mark. Mm. So that feedback is, is certainly um, an endorsement that yeah. it's worth the work. 
that's encouraging that that's encouraging to know that students are giving that type of feedback for such a strategy especially one that is related to testing them at the beginning of the course <laughs> <laughs> and um, i did not make make uh, yes i did not make them um you know i did not stress that it was because of late coming but i did mm -hmm. have almost a hundred percent punctuality um wow Opposed to before when I would have a, a, as many as 17 or 20 students coming in late. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> so, do you have any helpful resources that you could recommend for our viewers to review? Sure. I will uh, upload to the resource page for, for this uh, recording. Mm -hmm. I will upload the, the peer review, the template for it and some tips on um, designing or developing or creating the multiple choice um, quizzes. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I will be checking those out myself. And viewers, I encourage you to do the same. So Dr. Ferdinand, thank you very much for taking the time to share with us today. You're welcome. It's a, it was my pleasure. Thank you. And to our viewers, I encourage you to share this episode with others. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode of this virtual summit. See you soon. <laughs>